Welcome to week four. We're talking about uh, reality and art this week. So before we get into what we're going to be doing this week fully, uh, I will be looking at your outlines tomorrow on Tuesday. Uh, so be looking for those Tuesday, Wednesday. I should have all of them done. That way you can apply any feedback that I've given to uh, your theory application paper. Uh, and you know those should pretty much write themselves at this point. But we have a little bit of a lighter week this week uh, because I want you to focus so much on that paper. So there's no quiz this week. There is a discussion board. Uh, you, so you still have three assignments due this week. You have a discussion board, you have a self-portrait assignment, and you have your theory application paper. So again, remember that paper at this point should be pretty solid and ready to go if you've done your outline the way that it needs to be done. Uh, so let's jump into what we got going on. So we're reading uh, in visual culture, in visual culture, excuse me, chapters eight and nine on photography and film. Uh, so make sure that you pay attention, you know, to uh, any terminology that might come up uh, that might possibly be helpful next week uh, when you guys are going to start writing your film reviews. So this is going to be that section on photography and film will be helpful to kind of look back at uh, for next week's writing assignment. So we have a discussion board. What is reality? So I want you to make sure you read chapter eight and view the film clip about photographer Jeff Wall. And you can click on this link here to find that. And then the interview with Cindy Sherman, who's another photographer, a uh, really iconic 20th century photographer, one of my favorites. So click here to watch the film about her. It's a whole episode which has other artists, which it's a great episode. I encourage you to watch the whole thing, but you only need to watch the section about Cindy Sherman for this discussion board. It starts at about 15 minutes and 30 seconds and ends about 34 minutes and 50 seconds. So excellent episode. What I want you to look at for this discussion board is number one, what is reality and is reality interpretive? Uh, that's something that photographers definitely dive into a lot in their work because, you know, is my reality and the way I view the world different than the way you possibly view the world? Can photographers decide what to include and exclude? What lighting to use? How to frame the shot? All of these things can have an effect on this concept of reality, so keep that in mind. Number two, do you believe it is a photographer's job to represent reality? Why or why not? And I want you to use evidence from the text to support your opinion. And number three, look at uh, Jeff Wall and Cindy Sherman and how do they blur the lines of reality in photography. So really give some good examples there. Make sure you comment or question at least one of your peers posts. So possibly something to ask, what did you think of these two photographers work? Or if you found something in their post that was interesting that you agreed with or disagreed with, might want to add to, go ahead and do that. Make sure you do participate with peers though because that's how you get full credit on these assignments. In your instructions, again, make sure two to four sentences in length for each of these. I'm not asking for full paragraphs, full, you know, essays on these. So don't, don't overdo it because I want you to not get stressed out and make sure you have enough time for the other assignments. So, you know, give me two to four sentences of thoughtful writing in these uh, for each question and we should be good to go. Okay, we're doing self-portraits this week. Since we're dealing with photography, you're going to use a camera to create three different self-portraits. You can use anything from film, high-resolution camera phone. Uh, each image is going to be accompanied by three reflections. So these reflections don't need to be long. Two to four sentences per question is appropriate. It's the same as discussion boards. Your first, first portrait we're calling honesty. So the idea of this is to be as honest as possible. Set up simple background, photograph yourself, uh, as honestly as you can, and this is an interesting one because students have trouble with this. I notice they still do things to kind of sway their viewer's opinion. And this is part of this is can we really not sway the viewer's opinion by the way we are presenting an image? You might choose to do the portrait in black and white. You might smile. You might have a straight face. But try and keep this as simple and straightforward as possible. So then I want you to answer these questions. What makes this portrait an honest representation of who you are? Uh, how did the portrait make you feel? Did it make you feel empowered? Maybe it made you feel really vulnerable here with this honest one. Uh, how might this portrait be an example of this whole concept that the camera never lies, right? We've heard this over and over again. And that's a tricky one because I think the camera very much can lie. Uh, portrait number two is going to be an expressive portrait. So the idea of this is to 
communicate who you are, your unique personality, in a unique way. You might put on a costume. Uh, you might photograph yourself in your favorite place or during your favorite hobby. The point of this portrait is to be uh, creative as possible and represent yourself in a creative fashion, in an expressive fashion. So then answer the following questions. So these are going to be similar. What are you trying to express about yourself here? How did this portrait make you feel? And then how might this portrait be an example of this whole reality versus imagination debate that goes on in our text this week? In the third portrait, you're going to use objects to portray yourself. So this is to represent your essence without actually being a picture of your face. You might photograph your hands during some activity, uh, compile your favorite objects, maybe together in a still life. Uh, use creativity here. The point here, create a more abstract representation of who you are, but kill, still capture who you are in, you know, in essence. Uh, then answer the following question. So again, what are you trying to express here? How did this portrait make you feel? And then number three, how might this portrait be an example of the saying, a picture is worth a thousand words that we've heard so often. This is done as a blog entry. So it's important that you embed uh, your portraits into the blog entry. You don't need to submit any attachments for this assignment. Simply use the text editor as your written response. Uh, and I've given you an example of how to uh, format it. So this is me. This is I'm an example of the expressive portrait. So you can see that I've titled it at the top, portrait number two, expressive. I've given the image. And this is uh, me riding down the road. We have a little 1988, <coughs> excuse me, BMW convertible. It's a um, kind of a piece of junk, but it's our piece of junk and we love it. And this was just a very happy moment feeling, you know, kind of stress-free. Uh, so it's an expressive portrait. So what are you trying to express about yourself here? Uh, and then, you know, you could say, I'm trying to express. Number two, how does the portrait make you feel? This portrait makes me feel. And uh, ex just follow that format there. So that will give you an idea of how I'd like you to structure these. So please note that while I by no means expect you to be professional photographers, I expect you to put time and thought into these portraits. These cannot be vacation pictures from last year. These have to be pictures that you take for this assignment. Be sure images are clear unless you're intentionally blurring them as I have in this portrait. Be creative. Take pride in your work here, okay? So again, I don't want pictures that you took from a couple years ago. I don't want you to just snap a quick picture of your face. I want there to be some thought put into these. So that is that assignment. Now we're on to our theory application paper. So you should be pretty familiar with what's going on here by now since you've selected your images and you've written an outline at this point. If you haven't gotten your outline in, uh, please get that in ASAP because I can really tell a difference in students' work when they get that outline in, when I give a lot of feedback, and then when they apply that feedback to their final paper. So you know at this point you've selected two works of art of similar subject matter, one that is abstract, one that's naturalistic and realistic, uh, or what Fry would call an imitation of reality. Uh, you've used hopefully some of these good sources. You haven't used any from textbook or lecture. You can use the same artist but not uh, the same works of art. So I've given you examples here of an abstract. So we've used Van Gogh's Starry Night, and then we've used Caspar David Friedrich's Abbey Among the Oaks. So we have two landscapes. There's a church here, there's a church there, there's trees here, there's trees there, it's evening, the sun is setting, or it could be rising here. So I've picked two images of similar subject matter that are uh, represented in completely different ways. So that way in your paper you can really compare and contrast them. So remember we're walking through Panofsky's three-point system of deciphering meaning. So we're doing that primary, that secondary, and that tertiary or intrinsic level. Uh, that intrinsic level is where a lot of your research should be, right? Because we're kind of looking outside the picture frame. We're getting some context for the work of art. And then in part two, you're diving into Roger Fry and looking at the five emotional elements of design, and you're comparing and contrasting these. So here's some formatting guidelines that I'd like you to keep in mind for your paper. You can use MLA or, PA or APA uh, formatting as long as you pick one and are consistent with it throughout the paper, but make sure that you have a format that you're using here. Make sure you include the two images embedded into your paper. So don't just give me the links to them in the paper. I want this as if you were printing out the paper and handing it in to an instructor in a face-to-face -face class, right? 
you would have a title page, you'd have the images there, you wouldn't expect them to go look them up somewhere, right? Uh, you'd have captions for your images. So remember to look over the writing styles presentation. We want artist's name, title of the work that should be in italics, preferably. The year the work was created, the medium, is it oil on canvas, is it bronze sculpture, whatever it might be. The source, so this is the full web address. I should be able to copy and paste that web address into my web browser and it should take me exactly to where your image is located. Not just the general museum page, but the page with that image. Research, I want a minimum of three different sources here. One can be the textbook uh, and you know, cited appropriately in a work cited section at the end of the paper. So you should have already done that for your outline. So make sure you have three unique sources. So I want citations in the body of the text where they're appropriate. If you paraphrase, if you quote, or use any research from any source, including our textbook, be sure to give an in-text citation for that information. This helps your reader not only know where the work is coming from, it helps them know specifically what research is coming from what source. So if you just have a work cited section at the end of your paper, while that's helpful, it doesn't tell us where that information in the intrinsic level came from if someone wanted to do some further research. It also, of course, helps with the you know, plagiarism, that you're making sure that you're giving credit where credit is due. Remember that I don't expect you to be art historians. It's perfectly fine for you to paraphrase. It's perfectly fine for you to use quotes and to use research. Just make sure you tell us where that information came from and we'll be good. Remember, first-person narrative voice, not appropriate for formal papers. You can use I, me, my, and your journals, your discussion boards, all you want in your create assignments, perfectly acceptable. I encourage it there. Here, I don't want that, and I've talked about this before, but when you are using I, me, my, you're basically giving your opinions. Opinions don't have to be backed up with research. They're just opinions, but if you do this in a way that you're stating something, you have to then give evidence of that. And that's what I really, really want to encourage you to do here. And last but certainly not least, be sure that you proofread. If you feel that your writing needs further assistance, you can go up to this link at the top on the, on the menu, this tutoring online link, and you can submit your paper there. They will help you with grammar and formatting. They'll proofread your paper. And it may take a little bit of time to get back to you. I'm willing to give extensions for those of you that use this service. Just uh, let me know. And that way I can see what, you know, the feedback they've given. We can kind of walk through some of it together if, if you need that. Okay, any questions about your theory application papers, please don't hesitate to ask me. Remember, I'm your biggest advocate. I want you to do well, but I can't help if I don't know there's a problem. Don't wait until... 10 o'clock the night before this paper is due to tell me that you're struggling with Fry or struggling with Panofsky or can't find research, right? Let me know ahead of time and I'm more than willing to help. There is no quiz this week and that is not because I just want to be nice. It's because I want you to really focus on this paper. I like good theory application papers, so give them to me since I'm giving you a break on your quiz. So create assignment, really fun one. Discussion boards, these always have a uh, Good, good debates kind of going back and forth on this idea of reality, so dive into those. Get your reading done, and we are set for this week. Again, any questions, any comments, uh, please send me an email, and I will get back to you ASAP, and have a great week, everyone.